Greetings and praise the Lord. Welcome to our daily devotion. Um, we are on the second episode on one day at a time. Uh, live one day at a time. Tomorrow is going to be there, but you know what? Don't worry about it. Your past is gone. Don't think about it. Let the past be past and let today be your day. And the second episode on one day at a time is rejoice in the Lord. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we are grateful that you've given us yet another moment to rejoice in you because it is you that has given us another day. You have woken us up. You've given us an opportunity to see this day so that our hearts will be filled with joy when we see what the Lord has done and what he's about to do. We thank you that there are many that desired King of Glory to be with us today, but you have made us to be with you today, to exist today, to celebrate today, and to rejoice in our Lord. Thank you for what you have done. You continue doing great and marvelous things. We honor you and give you praise as you continue to trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, Philippians chapter 4 verses 4 to 7 from the Passion Translation. The Bible says, Be cheerful with joyous celebration in every season of life, even today. Let your joy overflow and let gentleness be seen in every relationship For our Lord is ever near. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. And we are going to see why you should not worry about a thing every day. And that is going to be in another episode. But today we are rejoicing in the Lord. Why are we rejoicing in the Lord? There are so many things that will cause us to rejoice in the Lord. And one of the reasons we are supposed to rejoice in the Lord is because we have his word, his word that guides us, his word that explains to us what joy is all about, his word that teaches us what he wants us, how he wants us to live this life. His joy, his word is also teaching us on the life after. So as we are rejoicing today, let us rejoice because God has given us his word. Let us rejoice because there was a birth for our Lord Jesus. And there are miracles in our Lord Jesus. And even let's rejoice in his suffering. That's what he has told us. He has also told us to rejoice in his resurrection. And he has also told us to rejoice in the gospel. We'll see other reasons as to why we are supposed to rejoice. But for now, let us look at Philippians chapter 2 verse 2. Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. So every day, as you are rejoicing, you are also fulfilling the joy of the Lord and even the joy of those ones who have brought you up in the things of the Lord. And as you are rejoicing in the Lord, you are rejoicing because you we, we have the same love we are are being of one accord and we are being on one mind let us rejoice because of these things you know what it's not easy to have people having the same mind like mind for us we have the mind of christ and that mind of christ is ours all of us who are in christ and if you are not born again today i give you an opportunity to give your life to jesus ask him to come into your heart and ask him to forgive you of your sins and ask him also to teach you his ways and have your name written in the book of life so that you can walk with him all the days of your life and you know what as you do that and receive him as lord and savior you're going to have the mind of christ and as you have the mind of christ you will have all what the lord wants you to do how he wants you to think every day and having the same love you will be able to love this way the lord loves when you have him in your heart you'll be able to be of one accord if you are together with christ 
you'll be able to be one accord with other Christians. And it is a joy to see what God is doing in these last days. He's bringing the body of Christ together. No one should be filled with greater than the other because we are of the same mind, we are of the same love, we are of, the, of one accord and of one mind. Let us be like-minded like Christ. Then John chapter 3 verses 29 from New King James Version. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. This is John telling his the disciples. You can imagine the friend of the bridegroom. Do you stand and hear him? You stand and hear the bridegroom who is Christ Jesus. Rejoice greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Rejoice in his voice. Rejoice and let the joy of the Lord be fulfilled in you as you continue to celebrate about this bridegroom who is our Lord Jesus. John 15 verses 11 to 12, also from the New King James Version. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you and that you, your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. The desire of our Lord Jesus Christ is when he speaks the word to us every day. Let the word of God be your daily food. As he gives us that daily word, that is our daily nourishment. He, we have his joy. His joy is going to remain in us. And then what is going to happen when the joy of the Lord remains in us, we, he is going to, um, our joy is going to be full. We are going to have joy in fullness. We are going to feel that emptiness is going to be filled with the love and the joy of the Lord. And the commandment that God has given us is that we love one another because he himself has loved us. That love which he has loved us with, it has been imparted in our lives so that we are able to impart it to others. May the Lord enable us to love one another today. Not, I'm not talking about tomorrow. Now, may that love of the Lord be upon us today so that we are going to have the joy of the Lord fulfilled in us as we love one another. Nehemiah 8.10 New King James Version, the Bible says, Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. You know, these are the children of Israel. As they were celebrating when they had already seen what God had done in them building the walls with the, with the Jeremiah, with Nehemiah, the walls that were broken, being built, and the temple being repaired. Can you imagine that it was destroyed by the enemy, being built? So when we see what has been destroyed by the enemy has already now been restored, and the Lord has built it, and, uh, and even uh, we have a new breath of the Lord. And that what was meant to be destroyed is now existing, is strong today. And we can open our mouths and rejoice in the Lord and celebrate and even give a shout of praise. And we can even rejoice by singing a new song unto the Lord. Let me tell you, when we know that we are not supposed to be looking at the past of what has happened, let us look at what the Lord has done to us today. That the walls that were broken, he has rebuilt them and restored even our gates. And what he has done is, is he has kept the enemy away from us. So there is no cause for sorrow, but to rejoice in the Lord who has given us another time, another day to see the goodness of the Lord, to exalt the Lord, to honor him, 
to wor worship him and even to give our lives completely unto him. Let us rejoice in the Lord who has forgiven us of our sins. Yes, the Israelites had been involved in things that do not glorify God, but they were forgiven and they were taught to celebrate and select the kind of celebration they were supposed to have. They were supposed to rejoice and even share with those ones who were not able to make it to have something to eat, share with one another. Let's share our joy with one another. If the Lord has really blessed you, share your joy with others. Let even others, not just non-believers, believers rejoice with you. Invite them to celebrate with you and you will see what the Lord will continue to do. In Psalms 5.11, also from the New King James Version, but let all those who rejoice who put their trust in you, let them ever shout for joy because you defend them let those who all who love you who love your name be joyful in you what a blessing that those ones who put their trust in the lord let them rejoice let them shout with joy because the lord has defended us and because that i mean all those who love the name of the lord they are supposed to be joyful because you know what? You have a revelation that is why you love the Lord. You have a revelation that is why you can walk in ways that glorify Him. Not walking like others. Not walking that just or a carelessly and aimlessly. But you are walking steadfastly with the Lord. Walking hand in hand with the Lord. Walking this journey and walking in the steps of our God. That is why you're supposed to be rejoicing because you have this revelation that has been given unto you. Romans 12, 10 to 13 from New Living Translation. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. You see, when you have genuine affection, genuine love, you, and you take delight in honoring one another. You will never be lazy. When we, we want us to rejoice, don't be lazy. But work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. You are supposed to rejoice because we have hope in the Lord. Let's rejoice because of this hope that God has given us. Let us be patient. Even when there are troubles around us every day, let us be patient in the Lord and rejoice in the Lord. And keep on, and, and we continue even praying. As we are praying, we are rejoicing in the Lord. And even let us, let us also know there are people who are needy. There are people who are, cannot make it as you are making it. That let us be ready to help them. And let us be eager to practice hospitality, making sure that we are hosp hospitable, we are ready to share that which God has given to us. Share the word first. Let the word of God be shared. And as you're sharing the word of God, share with, with others what God has given unto you. And you see God doing great and marvelous things as you wait upon him and as you continue to celebrate because of the goodness of the Lord. May the Lord bless you as you purpose to walk in his way. This is Bishop Dr. Grace Karuki of Amazing Grace International Ministries and Abundant Glory International Ministries. Mother to the CMCs, that is the church ministers, children around the globe. Please, I'm also mother to the amazing champions, the children that God has allowed us to take care of in Nairobi, Kenya. And also, log into our website at www.agracem.org, partner with this ministry. Also, follow us on Facebook and YouTube and at Bishop Dr. Grace Karuki. Or, or Karuki Bishop Dr. Grace, like, subscribe, and let's hear your comments, and let's hear how you're rejoicing in the Lord, and as you dig deeper into the scriptures that you have read today. God bless you for now. Shalom, shalom.